User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way! Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com. Hi, it's Mike with Ugtastic. I'm here at SCNA 2013. Today I'm sitting down with Micah Martin, who is the founder and CTO of 8th Light. Uh, 8th Light is also the main organizing body behind the SCNA conference at this time. It didn't start that way. It used to be a pair relationship, but we'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry I went off a script there. But what is interesting is that SCNA has been around for five years, but there is a history for 8th Light working with the community and having an open relationship with the community that went beyond just a conference <clears throat> and a user group. Uh, so thanks for taking the time to sit down with me, Mike. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so I remember uh, several years ago you had a small office up in Libertyville, yep. and there was a few people, but you had this idea of a pair Friday, and mm -hmm. people could come in, um, I don't remember if we had RSVP or something like that, but you can come in and uh, and sit with, with your company. That was really interesting and progressive, and I had never seen anybody doing that at the time. What, what led to you starting there? Was that your first experience dealing with opening up to the community, or how did that manifest well it comes from a long a long way back you know starting my career how I learned everything was really by working with other people and meeting mm -hmm. new people I mean that's how new ideas came into my repertoire and new languages came into my repertoire mm -hmm. so that that uh, community that uh, working with the public just anyone you can get your hands on you know right. working with them that's how you grow as a craftsman and uh, you know, one of my concerns at 8th Light is that you were a really tight-knit group. Um, <clears throat> but if, if we don't have external influences, we're going to stagnate with the knowledge that we have. And so it was important to kind of open up 8th Light and invite people in uh, so that we get more uh, cross-pollinization. Right. Yeah. And, and, and was this, I can't remember, that you had some apprentices at the time. So you were already looking at the craftsmanship con concept. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember if this was pre uh, Craftsmanship Manifesto when you were doing the Pair Fridays, or was that? Well, it's probably around the same time. Around the same time. Yeah. So this was all; these were all ideas that were still formulating at the time, or um, the Craftsmanship ideas. Right. <clears throat> um, I mean, that was another event that we held at our office. I mean, that <laughs> that might have been one of the uh, like the spirit was already there, right? We were right. already. Uh, embracing the the principles of software craftsmanship, um, but yeah, we invited about twenty people into the Libertyville office to talk about software craftsmanship as well. Uh, so it was all part of the same motivation, I think. Right. In the uh, the pair Fridays, is that something? I mean, I know I once personally, so that's that's my history. I my first introduction to Ruby was actually at one of those pair of Fridays uh -huh. um, and I had no idea what was going on and to this day sometimes still don't know what's going on um, <laughs> but the uh, uh, were, were there a lot of people that embrace that I know a few people I've spoken to that once but uh, was that something that you had a lot of of, of, of participation and people taking advantage of or no not when we were in Libertyville yeah. and we call it Waza by the way a Waza yeah Friday afternoon is our Waza 10 Waza yeah what are and it's a Japanese word? It's a Japanese term. Uh, it's something that we used to use a lot in martial arts. It, <laughs> it basically means to practice. Okay. Uh, so Waza is our practice term. Right. And so 8th Light actually has a lot of references to... Um, you're, you're big into the Japanese culture. So 8th Light well, even yeah. itself... I, I mean, it roots from like the name of the company. Um, and a lot of the principles come from my experience mm -hmm. in, in martial arts. Right. You, you have like one or two black belts, don't you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, so, so you yeah. know, you, you come to a conference, the, where's the bodyguards? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm out of practice, right? I could not, I could not defend myself at all. But, uh, I mean, what the real value of martial arts was not self-defense. I think it was the discipline, the, uh, the philosophy. I mean, that was the real value that I got. Right. Out of it. And so you've, you've been... So now it's... You, you've grown from being this this small, tight knit company to being sixty people. Yeah. And in it's it you don't really have or I don't think you have the, the the 
formal pair Friday. Now it's kind of the Eighth Light University. So mm -hmm. it seems that did that, did Eighth Light University, which is a Friday events um, where people come in and do presentations, and there's kind of an open time. Is that something that evolved from Pair Friday, or was that a totally different initiative that you? It was different, and, and it was just convenient to merge them. <laughs> but the whole idea behind Eighth Light University was that we we expected our craftsmen to go to conferences and give talks, and um, you know, some people did, some people mm -hmm. didn't, and it, it occurred to us that you know, giving a talk at a conference can be intimidating. Right. And we have an audience of people that you know, we share knowledge with, so mm -hmm. why not have our craftsmen teach uh, or give give talks to the rest of the company? Mm -hmm. And uh, we started doing that, and we're like, well, you know, we're not working on any client stuff, right? There's no secrets here. Why don't we just open it up to the public? Right. And anyone can come. Uh, and that turned out to be really popular, especially when we moved to the city. Um, and then, you know, we were already doing open source practice, Waza, on Friday. Mm -hmm. So we're like, well, people can just stay all afternoon and work with us. Uh, and so that's kind of how that evolved. Now, I mean, I'm, th this also makes me think about a lot of those people that I met many years ago, or in internet world many years ago, uh, are still with Eighth Light. And are still integral or growing in their in their capacity. Has has. Do you feel that this that embracing an open culture, where it isn't um, an isolated, you come in, we close the doors, we lock the doors, we have trade. I mean, you do of course have trade secrets, but the information that you're sharing, the tools, those aren't the trade secrets. It's the client's work that's trade. So you, yeah. you can come in and, and talk about the tools you're using. It's not like, oh, that person works on closure, so mm -hmm. they're, they're the only ones who can work on it. No, they're going to teach everybody else right. and learn it. Has that, has that open nature, uh, do you think that has contributed to some of the long-term uh, uh, retention of employees at, at Eighth Light? Um, or is that something else, do you think? Or obviously, I don't know what your actual numbers are for or turnover so uh, well you're right I mean a lot of people have been at Eighth Life for a long time mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know if it's exactly for for our openness mm -hmm. um, you know I like to Eighth Flight is the favorite my favorite job it's like mm -hmm. the most fun I've ever had at work and uh, and my goal our goal in, in Eighth Flight was to make it that way for everyone we mm -hmm. wanted to be the fun place to work for people right. who are passionate about software uh, and I think that's why people stick around. Do you think uh, you've, or not, you wouldn't think, you would know this, have there been any people that have come in through uh, presenting at Eighth Light University or participating in a uh, pair of Waza events mm -hmm. um, that you've hired in? Has that been something that's been uh, a recruiting tool as well? Or is it more about just sharing knowledge or getting the name of Eighth Light out there? Well, it's... Uh... Yeah, definitely. I mean, people have come to Eighth Light University. It's a it's a one way that a lot of people first get introduced to Eighth Light. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, we've hired several people that have come to Eighth Light U. Uh, but that's that's not our real intent, right? We mm -hmm. we just want to we want to share with the rest of the world. Like we we believe that what we're doing is it works pretty okay. Um, and whereas a lot of people are not doing so well with software. And so if we can help the world get better and make software more enjoyable for, for all developers out there, that's a win too. Yeah. So when a company is looking at ways, uh, like if, you, if, if I'm a company maybe in another city and I'm trying to think of ways that I can be um, uh, more engaged with the community and, and, and become more a part of the community instead of just being an isolated company, what are some of the What's some advice you might give um, that they might want to think about when they're approaching uh, the developer technical community and how how they can maybe effectively engage the community? Um, I would say just start. I mean, just you know, post something on the web or tweet about it and mm -hmm. invite people into your office. Uh, you know, people who see that they. Mm -hmm they value that you want to share with them and that, that builds relationships and over time word will spread and it'll grow. Uh, so so start. a lot of it is just kind of relaxed. Not everybody's going to steal your IP to the moment they walk in your door. No, no. And you don't, you don't need to be super prepared. I know some of our ATLU sessions, uh, you know, some of those I've done are, are pretty horrible. 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, and people have to, they have to know they're coming to this kind of informal event. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no spit and polish there, and they, they know that. Right. But they're still, val it's valuable to them anyways, you know. Yeah, sometimes a rough cut can just be as useful as anything else. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down sure, with me. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. This is, this is not a bodyguard. It crushes my hand. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Martha. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.